Great job, Chris. Thank you for that as well. For our next speech, we have Mary Ann Burroughs, DTM. Mary Ann Burroughs, DTM, has been a Toastmasters for about six years. She never imagined that she would be involved with Toastmasters. But after many years of encouragement and suggestions from a number of friends, she decided to go to a meeting. She actually went to about eight meetings and then decided to join the American Greetings Toastmaster Club 8142. When she started, she made a commitment to give a speech a month. As a result of that, and a lot of other projects, she worked to become a distinguished Toastmaster last fall. She is amazed at how much she has learned in the way she has excelled and is impressed with what Toastmasters has to offer. Marianne will be presenting her speech today from the Successful Club series. She is required to give a speech from this series to complete the Advanced Communicator Silver. This is a prepared speech from Toastmasters International, and the purpose of the speech is for the speaker to offer suggestions, ideas, and tools on how to be a good mentor and a good mentee. The speaker is also to promote the value of a strong mentoring program for the new mentee, the mentor, and to the club. The speech topic is mentoring. Time is 10 to 15 minutes. Please help me in welcome <laughs> Good morning, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome to all. <laughs> Many of you that know me for very long know that I'm very passionate about Toastmasters. But well, one of the aspects of Toastmasters that I'm extremely impressed with is the mentoring program. When each of us walked into Toastmasters the first time, most of, them, most of us weren't very comfortable. We were rather unconfident, we were anxious perhaps, and possibly the experience of having a mentor to help you along in this process, I find to be very beneficial. Now when you know that whenever you started, you weren't real sure what was going to happen, but as you kept moving along, you not only were able to accomplish things, then you eventually went through your meridian or your period of adjustment and, and encouragement and you learned how to do it. And then, for many of us, we then became mentors ourselves. And most of us have, met, have had mentors in our lives, whether it's a teacher, a parent, a friend, an associate, or a co-worker, somebody that was there to encourage you to to um, give you feedback and to help you take those little steps. And as I was thinking about this, I thought of having a friend that you walk home to school with. You know, you might have a 15 minute walk. Alone, it's kind of lonely and it takes a long time. But when you have a friend there walking with you, you're home in no time. Well, that's the same kind of thing that mentoring in Toastmasters gives us. I found a quote that I thought was very appropriate for mentoring. And it says, a mentor is someone who sees more talent and ability within you than you see in yourself and helps to bring it about. And that's by Bob Proctor, a motivational speaker. And I think that's really what a, what a mentor is because when we walked in this room, we didn't see any potential in our speaking, or for many of us at least. And yet, as a previous person who is sitting in that situation, you know that in six months or in a year, that person would not be the same person that walked in that door. So a mentor serves as a role model, a coach, offer, and, and confident offering knowledge and insight and perspective or wisdom useful to the mentor. Now, one of the things that we're going to do is to develop the talents in our new mentees. One of the ways we do it is to help them learn the program. What is a CC? What is a CL? What is TMI? What's a table topics person? All very confusing when we start. But if you can sit down and explain those things to your mentee, pretty soon they know what those terminologies are. Learn club standing. It looks better. <laughs> learn club customs. Now, each club has very similar things, but there are things that are a little bit different. For instance, in our club, we have an education master. In a lot of clubs, they don't have that. In one of the other clubs I'm involved in, the president starts the meeting every single week. So we have to teach the people in our club exactly how our club works. Develop confidence. 
You want to make sure that your mentee feels good about themselves. If they came up there and did their eye counter for the day, tell them what a great job they did so that next week they will want to come and fill their role. Participate more. If the mentee feels comfortable and confident, they're going to want to step up and do the next role the next week or the week after. And quickly learn speaking skills. The more encouragement we have, the more feedback we have, the quicker we're going to move through this process. Now, a mentoring program also helps the mentee. It helps them further their refined skills. If my mentee, my mentee asks me a question and I don't know the answer to it, I go find out what that answer is, then I can give that to them and I will indeed have learned something in that process as well. And it also helps us to learn new skills. I've been in Toastmasters for about six years now, and I'm constantly learning new things or refining the things that I have. As a mentor, you also learn from your mentors. You learn things from that person, as well as I mentioned before, that you find things that you might not have known before. It helps you to remain productive. I think sometimes after we finish our CC and our CL, we kind of lean back in the chair and say, well, I'm a Toastmaster. I've got this under control. And we don't really keep moving forward in our process. Do something for others. I think it always makes us feel better when we help somebody else. And receive recognition. If you are working on your competent leadership and you complete your mentor mentoring process, you will then have the opportunity to check off project number nine in your, in your competent leadership. Benefits to the club. Isn't it interesting? We're helping the mentee, we're helping ourselves, and we're also helping the club. Because if you have a good, strong mentoring program, and know that not all clubs do, and clubs that are just getting started, all start out with their members, 20 members, and nobody knows what they're doing. Then, fortunately, they usually have a mentor that helps the club get started. But we're very fortunate in this club because we have people that have been in the club for some time who can then see back to the new members. So it does help the club. And if you have a well-trained member, they're going to feel better about them. They're going to feel good about themselves. They're going to be encouraged about Toastmasters, and they're going to want to move forward in their, their plans for Toastmasters. Um, they'll have more satisfied members. If a mentor, if a member has been well trained, they're going to be a good member. They're going to fill in those roles. They're going to know what to do next, and they're going to be uh, a great pillar in the Toastmaster club. <laughs> and it also helps to retain mentor members. If you're well trained, you're going to continue moving forward. You'll be able to feed back to others. Qualities of a mentor. Be available. Make sure you let your mentee know what your phone number is, what your email is, and that you can set up times to connect with your mentee so that you can help that men mentee to excel as quickly as they wish to. Be patient. Not all mentees are the same. Some mentees are on the starting line and they're ready to go. And some are standing in the back not real sure why they joined in the first place. <laughs> so you need to feel that out and know where they're coming from and encourage them from the point of view of where they're starting. Be sensitive to where they're starting. If it takes them six months to get their first icebreaker, that's the process they need to have. Be respectful. Make sure you're, you're working towards what they're interested in, not what you're interested in. And be flexible. And be supportive of the club. Make sure you, want to, you make the mentee understand that this isn't just about them. When we read our first, um, what's that called? When we first get initiated, well, the, the mentee reads that the initiation. Thank you. When they're reading that, it says that they're going to work on their skills. They're going to work on their speeches. They're going to work on the goals. It's not just the club giving to the mentee. The mentee has responsibilities as well. And you as a mentor, you want to have the knowledge. And, and again, this doesn't mean you have to be perfect to know everything about Toastmasters, but it is that you're willing to find the answers if questions are asked. Be confident. Show the mentee that you're confident in what you're sharing so that they're going to have confidence in you as a mentor. Be a good listener. Find out what's important. I put a 
flyer in front of you if you'd like to turn to it's called Tools for Mentoring. And if you go to the third page, if you <laughs> meet with your new members and have them fill out this profile sheet, you'll have an idea of exactly where your mentor wants to go. Not everyone in the club is looking for the same goal. I know when I joined, I just wanted to do speeches. I didn't know anything about the leadership program. But my mentor explained to me, well, you're going to be here doing the roles anyway. Why not fill in your, your, your competent leadership? I thought, well, that sounds like a good idea. And so that changed my mind because I understood a little bit about the program. But everyone has got their own goals and desires for what they want to accomplish. So listen to me. And be concerned about others. If you're just doing this to get it checked off on your, your project number nine, Maybe not a good idea to sign up to be a mentor. You really want to be a mentor for what you you receive from the, what the mentor mentee will receive, and as well what the club will benefit from. Initially, mentors should, and if you turn to page number two, there will be a list of the things I'm going to be going over. And now I called this tool for mentoring, and later I thought maybe we should, I should have called it tool a Bible for mentoring because. This little packet is something I want you to keep so that when you become a mentor, you'll have all this information right in front of you so you'll know exactly what to do in the steps in meeting with your mentee. So you're going to sit with your members, orient them to the customers and procedures of our club, and again, make sure they know all the criteria that happens in the club. Explain how to sign up. Well, there's a, an example of our club does this a little bit differently. We don't usually assign a mentor until they're already signed up, so that's definitely already in the case. And then help them with the icebreaker. And again, every mentee is different. Some mentees want to do it totally on their own. They don't want that assistance. Another mentor might be sitting in the back and hasn't gotten started on their icebreaker. You might want to call them or email and say, hey, how you doing on that icebreaker? Is there any way I can help you? Are there some suggestions that I can make to get you started on this? You can also invite them to present the speech to you before it's presented to the entire club so that they might feel comfortable. And again, work with them however it's best to serve them. On your next meeting, you would explain to them the awareness of the resources. Tell them about the container in the back that has all the forms in it. Send them a Toastmaster form. Send them an evaluation form. Make sure they know the website for Toastmasters International so that they can click in and find information on their own. Make sure they have the resources available. Provide positive feedback. So, so, so important. Feedback in a positive manner is so very vital to encouraging mentees to move forward. And that doesn't mean you don't suggest things that need to be worked on, but always begin in a positive way. Explain the responsibilities, not only as them as a mentor, a mentee, but as a member in this club as well. And help with the speeches and assignments. Uh, our club contests are coming up in the, in the next month. Make sure they know that there is a contest. Make sure they get involved in, in those activities. And then your third meeting sheet, you should tell them how you benefit and make sure they understand why you're enthused about Toastmasters. Make it personal. Invite them to other events. There's going to be Toastmaster contests not only in our club, but there's going to be contest, oh, the area contest and then the division contest. Call them up, invite them, say, why don't you come to the contest with them? Make them feel like you're, they're important to you. Acknowledge their progress, and again, feedback and positive means are always important. Explain what the officers' duties are so that they understand what those officers are in place for. And then maybe next year when it comes time to vote in new officers, because of your encouragement, they might want to choose to become an officer themselves. Explain to the speech contest, I've already gone over that. And describe the Toastmaster organization and make sure they know the value of that organization and what it can do for them as a member. Qualities of mentees. Now again, it's not just about the mentor, it's about the mentees as well. They need to be eager to learn. Did they sign up just to say I signed up like signing up for the gym and never showing up? Or are they really, or are they really interested in this place? 
Are they interested in really excelling in their speaking? Be receptive of not only the feedback that's positive, but the things that need to be changed or things that need to be improved. Be open to new ideas. Be loyal. Be grateful. And one thing that I is not on there, but I wanted to add is to be observant. Say, for instance, you're a new member and you you're, not, you're going to be the table topics master next week. Pay attention to the table topics master this week so that you know what that looks like. Now you might by next week forget a little bit about that, but at least you paid attention and you work towards that. That's the end of that one. A few more over here. Okay. Now, something I want you to be aware of is that when you're a mentor, you're not going to be a mentor for a million years. You're basically the mentor as you begin, at the first three months when that new mentee is just developing the qualities of being a mentee. Now, I mentioned that I passed out this. I want you to go to page number one. And I wrote in the, a number of websites that you can connect with that have to do with mentoring. A lot of the information I shared with you, you will find on there. And any time, you know, perhaps you won't be a mentee for six months. Take this out, go to these websites, review the material, and then approach your mentee so that you'd be prepared. And then on the final page is a just checklist for the mentor and the mentee of things that you want to make sure that you do in your process of being a mentor or a mentee. So today I hope that these tools and this packet will help you have information that will help you to be the best mentor that you can be. And some of us may have had good mentors. Some of us have, may have had mentors that weren't that good. But as you move forward, can you be the very best mentor?